friend, I want to just invite you to be a part of our magazine family. Prophecy in the News has done a magazine for a number of years. We have thousands of subscribers across uh, the nation and some other parts, parts of the world. This is available. A year subscription is $34.95. And the reason it's at that price is there is always uh, a special bonus offer. And you can go to our website to see what the current one is. Uh, you call the 800 number on your screen and get the information over the phone. But by paying that, you get 12 editions mailed to your home, plus you get the special bonus offers. If you only want the magazine in an electric form electronic format and no special offer, it's $24.95 a year. But we would love for you to be part of our family. The magazine always has very timely articles. These are by some of favorite guests and authors uh, that are a part of us. I always have an article. We have feature articles from the archives of J.R. Church and outstanding articles by Bob Carnuke on archaeology. Hope you'll join our magazine family. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. We're joined today by uh, one of our good friends, Jeff Swanson. Hello, my brother. It's good to be here, Pastor Clarkson. Thank you. Well, it's really good to have you. You know, you were introduced to uh, our folks, our viewers, Probably last year, if not before, you've been at our Prophecy Summit, but we also have uh, shared your work, which was uh, ending in Revelation. And that was 16 hours of teaching about really starting in Revelation and walking backwards, <laughs> even though you called it ending and you, you sort of trekked through the scripture. Yes. But you've been working now on a project called Starting in Genesis. That's right. Well, ending in Revelation started from eternity working backwards. Starting in Genesis begins with uh, eternity forward. We I go am forward glad for you got going the right direction, brother. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Uh, but you know, starting in Genesis, obviously, um, you have as a tag on, on your uh, product here, biblical science worldview. Yes. And that's true. I, you know, there's this, uh, there's this principle of the firsts, and I'm sure you discussed that. I haven't got to listen to all of this yet, but, um, you know, the first time something appears in Scripture is huge. And it absolutely it sets precedence yeah and we know who God is by what he's done and so understanding that his word says exactly what he did and simply believing that gives us a very very clear view of who God is as a loving father he gave us a, basically a perfect creation to live in uh -huh. and he gave us a choice and of course we made some bad choices and that changed creation from that point forward so we don't see that original creation like it was to begin and, with. and so you really delve into the first 11 chapters of Genesis is that right that's right well I, I've said as a pastor you know for years and studying the Bible myself as a just a follower of the Lord every major truth of Scripture I think is embedded in those 11 chapters absolutely it, it just and even beginning with the lineage there to Abraham Mm -hmm. which begins his work with Israel. But it's an amazing portion of Scripture. And, you know, we wouldn't have to look very long to realize probably the most attacked books in all of Scripture are those bookends. Yes. Genesis and Revelation. Satan has mounted his attack. One shows where he came from, and the other shows where he's going. Absolutely. He doesn't <laughs> like those books. <laughs> well, let's talk about this and uh, a biblical science worldview. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think today we have more knowledge that's pouring forth than we've ever had. Now, the important thing is, is to understand what science is, because it seems like there's this debate that, okay, I either believe the Bible or I believe science, but I can't believe both. Now, what's important is, is understanding what science is. Right. It comes from the Latin word scio, which just means to know. To know. And uh, God said in Hosea, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So having knowledge is a good thing. Absolutely. The important thing is to be able to have that knowledge that does not contradict God's word. Doesn't and Paul speak of science falsely so called? Yes, in absolutely. In 6. Mm -hmm. yes. It's like, and, and we get wrong uh, imaginations that are built up there. And an important part is just show me the scripture. You know, what is the scripture of where you believe and how that's founded? And a little bit ba of where this came from is, is my background. When I first gave my life to the Lord, I was in my 10th year. I was very, very hungry for knowledge, loved the Bible, was eating it up, reading it through and through. But I also started reading about uh, science and started l understanding the scientific aspects of how the body is made with lots of different systems and how uh, God created the universe to be so vast. 
And what I found was, is that somewhere sa along the same line, all of a sudden I was given too much information. Because of course it says not to add to God's word. Uh -huh. And somehow that evolutionary thought process creeped in. And I started believing that because I thought that was just true because that's the way it was taught to me. And as time went on, all of a sudden I had a friend that said, you know, you really don't have f any scriptural backing of your belief. So I actually had to start digging in and f taking a trek towards what was true and what was factual. Uh, and then I set myself on to uh, a quest for truth, so to speak, is to find out how old is the earth. And we actually can take one uh, biblical assumption of the fall of Jerusalem to King Nebuchadnezzar uh -huh. of 586 BC. We can actually work our way backwards through 66 date calculations to Adam's creation date and find out exactly when God did this. And it's, it's not rocket science. It's, uh -huh. uh, you know, a lot of people have done this. Uh, I spent seven years on my date calculations, compared them to Archbishop Usher, who did it in 1658. Found we agreed on all of them but two. And I used the actual scriptures themselves as the formula inside of my calculations. Uh -huh. So I couldn't change the scripture, so we agreed to disagree on those two calculations. But that's what brought us back to that date of creation which altered my thinking because I'd been told the earth is very, very old and that's what science believes and that's what it says to be true. But uh, I had to learn, wait a minute, science uses a scientific method. The scientific method starts with a hypothesis. Exactly. And that is nothing more than a faith statement that says this is what I believe. And then they construct an experiment and either prove that to be true or not true. And either if it is true, they go on and publish it and more people can repeat that experiment and validate it. Well, when you come to the age of the earth and creation, it cannot follow a scientific method. We can't cons construe any experiment that actually says when it is. It's not repeatable, is it? Not We can't go out and create a universe and say, well, this is how this was so done. So then we have to either believe, okay, well, this is human thought process or this is the biblical thought process. Um, if we can't do it by scientific method, then we have the next method, which would be the legal method. And that's when you bring a court of law, basically says here we're going to have a court, we're going to have a jury, we're going to bring in two or three witnesses to testify as to an event being true. Right. When you look at the creation account, you've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are three witnesses bearing testimony to not only how they did it, but when they did it. And so I had to alter all of my thinking. I had to rewire my brain, so to speak, from a scientific perspective, saying, well, if the earth really isn't this old, then how is this possible? And that's what starting in Genesis is all about. It's 16 hours of walking through this, explaining how, yes, we actually can see s distant starlight in a young universe and explain how that's possible from a scientific perspective. How the corruption of basically Adam and Eve's sin is what brought death into the world. We can't have death before they sinned. So the evolutionary process becomes really can't a happen. I, it's anti-biblical. Yeah. And so and those are solid theological reasons. Absolutely. Uh, not to mention, you know, standing in the New Testament, Romans 5 has Adam as a historical person. Yes. I mean, if you believe in some kind of uh, Christian evolution, theistic evolution, you know, at what point does this man become the one made in God's image and who gets to decide that? Absolutely. Uh, and Jesus supported that himself when he, he said in the beginning he made them male and female. Well, there's no male and female one cell organisms. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so right there, even Jesus refuted evolution from that well, and they process. Well, re they re reproduce after their kinds. And I believe that's stated how many times in chapter one? Uh, it's just over multiple times. and over and over again. You know, seed bearing after its kind, after its kind, after its kind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot, lot of good things. Well, <coughs> give us an idea of, of some of the, uh, the, the, the way you go into this uh, and maybe how you... Do you work with the genealogies in chapter four and five and the table of nations, things like that? What all do you co cover? Well, those date calculations are kind of brushed in fairly quickly to give the age of the earth. And that's all the 
the age of the kings and then some of those date scriptures that are found in there that give us time dates for history and then all the genealogies and how old <laughs> each person was. It's actually an unbroken chain of time. And so it's very, very clear that uh, the earth is less than 6,000 years when you believe a biblical worldview, so to speak. Um, you work in the catastrophism angle. And we do. The flood, the deluge. And so what happens is, is this brings up lots of questions. Um, then if the earth is really r young, then where do the dinosaurs fit into this picture? Uh, we bring in and actually say, well, if the earth is very young, then dinosaurs and humans must have coexisted. We're told that they did not. However, uh, if they did, we must have evidences that they actually do. As a matter of fact, just three hours south of here is the Paluxy River where they found human footprints and dinosaur tracks. Some will say they're faked. Uh, I went down there myself to witness the actual footprints. And I can tell you as a rock climber, you're uh, referring to Glen Rose, Texas, outside yes, of Fort Worth, correct? Absolutely, uh -huh. yeah, Dr. Carl Ball's Creation yes. Museum. And I looked at those, and being a rock climber, you have to know your rocks. <laughs> your life <laughs> okay. depends on it. And I can tell you that they were not faked, what yeah. I saw. There may be some fakes out there. I have yet to even see those. But they actually did a f spiral um, CAT scan on these and actually showed the imprint layers with the impact impressions of the human print and the dinosaur print. It's pretty much irrefutable evidence that yes, they did coexist at the same time and that just keeps shrinking those time frames down to a biblical world perspective. Yeah, that's good evidence. Are they doing anything to preserve those? Oh, absolutely. Them? Yes, they, well they're in sandstone and sandstone is, is pretty, uh, pretty solid as far as uh -huh. keeping it together and they have it just numbers of these it's not like just one not like a few sets yes one. exactly yeah. but there were so many of them found down there and they have them preserved and and you can just see it for yourself very easy evidence let me ask you as you begin this exploration because i i start reading through the bible um, i used to start in january and i've read through it for years and so here's a little tip for anybody i used to start in january and uh, when you view this we're probably there but uh, I get a good running head start and I I start back in November, mid November or so. So when I hit January, I'm well into uh, maybe Joshua or something really feeling the mo, you know, <laughs> and that lets me complete my Old Testament uh, by April. And then I spend the rest of the year delving into one book or uh, and then I go through the New Testament quite a bit. But not everybody's going to follow my plan. I'm just telling you what I do. But I love the Bible and um I love, I always love to start again in Genesis. Just those chapters are so uh, mm -hmm. profound. You can't exhaust them. I guess what I wanted to ask you, Jeff, is as you went through this in such depth, with your analytical approach and kind of engineering background, and everything, did you find something new or some things that you hadn't noticed before? Oh, absolutely. It was just kind of one revelation after another that I've shared and put inside of here. Uh, when you start, you get that aha moment and you know it's just the Holy Spirit inside of you giving that revelation that, oh, this is truth. And he always prompts you and says, yes, this is truth. Which is interesting because uh -huh. Jesus even <laughs> said to Peter, he said, I didn't reveal that I'm the Christ. He said, God the Father through the Holy Spirit basically has revealed this to you. And so that's why we, uh, as we <laughs> lay this out, we lay out the clearest pieces of evidence we're not going to say this proves anything we're giving you the evidence and you actually make the decision because the only way anything can be proved like is a court if you of law exactly if you if you have enough evidence to say yes this is true then it is proven to you and that's the, the way we approach this is we just lay out so much evidence that all of a sudden there's piles and piles of evidence that actual the more honest you are with the science backs a biblical worldview and exactly what the Bible says is that there was a global flood that happened. It reshaped everything. Um, we answer the questions, the tough ones, like where'd the water come from? Uh -huh. Where did all the water go? How much water was actually necessary to cover a mountain up to 20 feet above the highest mountain? Uh, all of those things are, are 
are answered inside of here and we actually back it up with the scientific backing of pieces and snippets of information that uh, point to how these events actually occurred. That's good. Well, I'd like to take a minute and just uh, let everybody know how they could get this material because we're offering a really special deal. Now you have to understand this is really a lot of uh, teaching material. I believe on each one of these, 16 hours. That's right. Uh, a lot of information. But, um, you know, let's talk about the one we're doing, starting in Genesis. And um, can I just read some of your questions? How can we trust the Bible is true? What was God's method of creation? When did God create everything? Are there fallible assumptions in man's dating methods? And how can we see distant starlight in a young universe? And that's something you have to be able to answer. And you've, you've mm -hmm. tracked that down. Origins of spiritual beings. That would be the angels, angels. all the orders. Uh, yeah. Is there evidence of a designer uh, in the cell? How did human sin corrupt creation? So on and on and on. And uh, I won't read all the questions, but... Uh, a full 16 hours in the 11 chapters in Genesis. Jeff teaches this. He's got uh, slides and uh, documentation. It's just incredible stuff to feast on. And then we are uh, sharing this is available also as a package. If you didn't get his ending in Revelation, and this starts in Revelation and tracks backward, um, this is uh, another 16 hours of study. And I've called Revelation the Grand Central Station of Scripture because... <laughs> All uh, all prophecies and scriptures kind of come through revelation. It's mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing. But if you'd like the Genesis package, uh, this is for sale again. Sixteen uh, hours of teaching for ninety nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. Uh, you can get both sets, however, at a discount for one hundred sixty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. You would simply want to go to the website prophecy in the news dot com or uh, go call the eight hundred number on your screen. And we'll be happy to assist you in getting that in your hands. What a feast uh, just to take the mm -hmm. bookends of Scripture that really, I think, have the most potent messages for all mankind. Absolutely. And some people would ask, well, why are we talking about Genesis on a prophecy show? And that's a valid, good question. Because Jesus actually answered that when he talked to Nicodemus and John chapter 3 and verse 12. Yeah. And he said, if you cannot believe the earthly things, then how are you going to believe the heavenly things? And I believe those earthly things are how creation actually came into existence. And we can see that in God's word. Moses wrote out the book of Genesis, gave us exactly how he did it. And those things we can see today in our creation. And we can see the corruption of it. And we can see the evidences of the flood. Those are all the earthly things. If you get those a solid foundation and you settle those things in your heart and believe those, it just builds the whole foundation that's necessary for understanding all your prophecy. And almost every time I've taught in Genesis, it just goes and has an equal balance to it in Revelation. It's got a beginning and an end, where this started in eternity, where it's going to end in eternity, what happened at the, the corruption and the fall, and then where's the last final judgment going to be? You know, where is that pre-flood world? Well, you know, we've got a post Jesus return world and the millennial reign and there's a there's a equal counterbalance everything, to each side everything of it. answers to it doesn't it absolutely <coughs> wow well let me ask you a minute just to track uh, a direction uh, tell us a little bit about what you uh, uncovered with the tower of Babel and the uh, confusion yes absolutely that is uh, one of the most interesting uh, studies that I found when I studied that out I found out that in Genesis 10 there is actually 70 different nations mm -hmm. listed there. Well, Jewish tradition, not inside the Bible, but inside of rabbinical listings, is they have said in their oral traditions that there were 70 original languages. And so it ties in exactly what you see there in, mm -hmm. in Genesis uh, chapter 10. And you've got 10, 70 different nations there as well. Now, some people would say, well, where does the Ice Age fit into all of this? And actually, the global flood is basically the predecessor that's necessary for an ice age. And the ice age is actually necessary for the dispersion uh -huh. of all humanity. We find out that 
uh, the ice was needed. It actually lowered the oceans and made continental shelves exposed to, to where people could actually travel migrate. and migrate from the Tower of Babel to down anywhere in the world. And, and down into those specific islands where they ended up and across to the uh, Americas. Yes. Is that right? Absolutely. And we actually show uh, mm. the archaeological evidences of cities that are now 80 to 100 feet beneath the ocean, mm -hmm. and they're finding these every year. It's good evidence of that's where they migrated to. It was beachfront property. <laughs> <laughs> that's always dangerous. <laughs> and then once the ice started melting, the oceans covered back up those uh, land bridges and even covered up these, what we're finding now, uh, almost yearly, these new archaeological finds. That's pretty fascinating. Did you have time, you know, this is an endless search almost, but did you have time to uh, discuss the Chinese people and uh, the way that uh, their alphabet or their characters <laughs> reflect these ancient stories? And every culture, you know, has uh, faint memories of the creation of the flood, even the yes. tower. Those stories are echoed throughout different regions of the world. Absolutely. It's a amazing. collective memory, if you will. We actually have a chart and we actually show that out of those flood legends, there's actually over 240 different cultures that all have a legend about a flood that was catastrophic, wiped out the whole world, about a boat, about and animals, and one, and one person. Family, yeah. Yes, th that made it through. And actually, we have this chart of the top 20 stories and how close they add up to the biblical account, either fully or okay. partially. And it's just amazing. And so in China, they have that same set of legends inside of there. Yes. And when you when you have that many different cultures, uh, it pretty well gives it some pretty good validity that there must be truth behind this. Well, yes. How else do you account for that? I mean, there there was a, a collective memory as people migrated, and of course, at the confusion as it happened, mm -hmm. they all retold the story in their, their own, own new tongues. Mm -hmm. So some of the names would have morphed yes. into different uh, different names, but the essence is there. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, I was specifically wondering, too, you talked about the Table of Nations, but the, the episode of the tower itself, did you uh, did you discover or see anything there that uh, you would relate to Revelation, for instance? Um, well, absolutely. That's interesting because the way I dated it, with all the information I had available, the Bible doesn't give it a specific date, uh -huh. but I can give it about a six-year window as to when it started or when it actually collapsed and came down. Uh, what happened thereafter, it says Nimrod actually was the beginner or the founder of the city of Babylon. And that is actually where we see the first essences after the flood of Babylon and the Babylonian system. Uh -huh. and which is we in Revelation. Which is in Revelation. Right at the end. Yes, yeah, 17 and 18, and that's where it all starts. And you can actually see it starts with a false idolatry is reintroduced. It starts with uh, Nimrod and his government being a false government that's actually, you know, a wicked and very vile government that's anti-God, and that was the whole reason behind the, the tower, uh -huh. was he didn't believe that God wasn't going to create another flood, but if we build a tower, we can defeat God this time if he does flood. Uh -huh. uh, it's, a, it's amazing that he was completely in rebellion. And that's what his name means, doesn't and it? And that's exactly what it means, is rebellion. Yeah. And, um, and he's a type of the Antichrist. Absolutely. He's, he's the one that started it all, the yeah. false religion, the false um, uh, the government, and all of those things. And that's what we're going to see actually comes to an end in Revelation 17 and 18. What he started will actually finish out. And uh, wow, uh, so many parallels. Well, um, let me just ask you, speaking about the flood, a little bit about the tower, what, what kind of things came out to your... Um, understanding about covenant in uh, in this study because there are some early uh, understandings of covenant in those chapters oh absolutely that's kind of where we finish things up is is genesis. that the covenant you got genesis 12. chapter 12 yeah. one and it's amazing that when you put a chronology behind that you find out that abraham was actually 55 years old when he got that original promise given to him the call to leave her the the basically hey you're going to leave your family uh -huh. you're going to go into the land of canaan and i'm going to take care of you and make you a great name a great set of nations bless the world through you 
Well, all of us that have been around for more than 44 years can appreciate he waited 44 more years having to believe that and he it and God wasn't reminding him You're every day from 55 to 99 <laughs> when to the baby Isaac was born exactly well he's 99 and then God returns and says uh, all right now she time. has conceived it's time next spring yeah. absolutely so now they finally have the first evidences of what God had promised him are you saying years. that God doesn't work on our impatient schedule <laughs> <laughs> well, he had to keep reminding himself that God promised this. And every time he went out and looked at the stars and the sand and he said, OK, Lord, you promised me. And every time he believe. introduced himself after his name was changed to Abraham, yes. father of a multitude. Yes. People would say, oh, really? What are your children's names? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still waiting on that. That's saying it by faith, speaking of those things which are not seen yet. Absolutely. But declaring them as though they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Pretty what's what's amazing is it says what gave him that uh, staying power when we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is he actually saw the end of the plan. The city of he God. actually saw the city that had come down, the new heaven, the new earth. And that is what he actually saw his yeah. descendants filling up that entire city with those people. So he wasn't just seeing a baby, but he right. was seeing the end of the plan in a full nations if you will well, well in about 40 seconds can you can you just tell me any insights from the covenant of noah you know the yes. bow in the clouds well what's amazing is is one of those discoveries we found is the first thing god said was go back be fruitful multiply that's pretty easy but then he also said this was the first time he said you are to kill the murderer right and he's instigating human government exactly and what's amazing is is that jesus himself submitted to human government wow. authority wow. <coughs> when he was standing before Pilate. And Paul said the same thing in, in Romans 13, 1. We're Powerful. to submit to those authorities. And what do we find in the archaeological record? The oldest found cuneiform is found in the city of Ur, and it says the same thing. The first law is to kill anyone who's a murderer. Wow. And we got that in the archaeological record. And, and I think that's God's direct uh, action because what led to the flood was the widespread violence. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're seeing an increase of that in our own day. Uh, folks, I would just remind you, we've been talking with Jeff Swanson about uh, starting in Genesis and how power packed those chapters are. Let me tell you that the word covenant we've been discussing means to a cutting. Mm -hmm. and, and I've noticed, and you may comment on that, when God set the bow in the clouds, it took uh, many years before Isaac Newton uncovered what happened. God cut the light <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> into all those yes. beautiful colors that we see. Uh, but there's a more important covenant cutting, and that was when Christ went on Calvary. And he offered the new covenant in his blood. He shed it for you so that you could be forgiven and know the living God. And we want to urge you to call on the name of Christ and trust him for your salvation if you never have. Until then, we're going to keep looking up. God bless you.